So this is day two of reviewing for this big, huge cumulative test. I was thinking to myself, why are we giving them two days of review? Well, these cumulative tests are huge. A lot of you have an A on one test, but then like a B minus on the other, or maybe even a C. There's a few of you that got a, a C on your second test. If this come, test comes out kind of weak, do you get that would average a B over three tests? Whereas if this test that you get tomorrow this cumulative test, if you study really hard for it and you rock it and you get an A, it could correct this to also an A and you could average an A over three tests. That's a huge difference. Could even be more dramatic. If a kid has an A and a C and they get a C on tomorrow's test, they just averaged a C plus over three tests. Whereas if they get an A tomorrow and it fixes this A, they could average an A. It's huge. Don't underestimate the power of the cumulative test, which is happening tomorrow. All right, so I started you off with this problem, and I hope you knew that this was x to the one-half power because then you can just put, oh, this is just x to the one-half, and then the bases are the same, and therefore the answer is already there. All right, let's go through a whole bunch of log rules like that because almost all of these are going to come up. 10 to the power of log 4. Don't say the answer, but once you know the answer, write it down and hint, there's no base written. So it becomes all about the base, just like Megan Trainer would have said. Turn and compare with the kid next to you and see what you got. <laughs> You are correct. It is 10 to this power. And that means if the base of this and the base of the log are the same, the answer is already there. The answer is just 4. Okay. So, next thing. Rewrites, they're huge. If I say log base uh, 3 of x plus 2 in a parenthesis, that forces that to be the argument of that log, uh, is equal to negative 1. You should be able to solve this thing because you know how to rewrite it. When you pull off the rewrite, the log gets out of the question. They won't say log anymore. Rewrites are huge mungus. So, do you know how to do it? Albright, how do you do a rewrite on this thing? Uh, it's 3 to the negative 1. Correct. Equals x plus 2. Excellent. All right. And that's 1 third. Very good. And then, what if you're like this? You might want to ask, uh, are we going to be allowed calculators on this test? And the answer is... It doesn't say on the top of the test. So, uh, I don't know. So, my gut says, though, that there are problems on here that have round to the nearest uh, decimal, and that makes me think you're going to have calculators. Oh, round to two decimal places? That definitely sounds like calculators. So, I'm going to check before the end of the hour with a colleague just to make sure. But I'm 97% sure that calculators would be allowed. Now, if I wanted to just change these to decimals, because that's what I recommend on the ACT test, most kids would be able to do it better if it was 0.33 and you take away 2, you're going to get negative 1 point. And I know the 0.33 can be confusing. Uh, so it's negative 1 and 2 thirds. Raise your hand if you had that one right. Okay, awesome. All right. So what about exponents. If you have struggled with the exponent part of this the other day when I did like problems like this, I'm just going to do one more because a ton of kids uh, had trouble with this kind of question. Is that a squared? Yeah, that is a squared. So it's 3a squared b to the fourth over 2a b to the third, but it can't be that easy. Put all of that to the negative 2. Mm 
Calculator really wouldn't help you on this because the variables. Now, I know there's going to be a fair number of people get this one wrong, but I'll give it a shot. The way I like to handle negative exponents is I like to act like they're not negative. And I just like to say, what if it just said squared? Well, I could square everything. That's easy. And then I like to go, okay, now what do I do with that negative power? Squaring everything's easy. Then you got to deal with the negative, and that's where it gets complicated. All right. It obviously is going to come down to some kind of a fraction answer. And talk to the kid next to you about how to handle that bottom part. Let's see if we can come up with a bunch of groups that get this right. Between you and your partner, you should be able to get this. Okay, pay attention here. So, the 3a squared b to the fourth is not, like, it's not involved at the beginning. At the beginning, it's just all about the base, all about the bottom part. So, I'm going to go that, everything gets squared is 4a squared b to the sixth. It's really easy to think ninth, but it's not because it's b to the third squared, which is you multiply that kind, b to the sixth. But wait, don't I have to do a negative on it? Yes, there's a negative power on it. So then this becomes one over all of that stuff. If I had the lasso tool like you guys do on notability, I would use it right now and drag that stuff down. This becomes one over all that. So now I've got 3a squared b to the fourth on top over one over all that stuff, 4a squared b to the sixth. And that means since that negative meant one over, I meant this, now I got to flip and multiply it. And so I'll have a 4a squared b to the 6th. They all just went to the top. Do you get what just happened there? And I did say it was a fraction, and it was a fraction, but except at the end, it all simplifies out so that the denominator is only a 1 here because I flipped this over and multiplied it. 12a to the 4th, b to the 10th. Did anybody pull that one off? All right. That was tricky, I know. Okay, so next up. I'm not going to do any more review of exponentials. That's all. If you, if you need more practice on that, go watch the last video I made. This is going to be all about logs here. What if you just had to have log, and you had to graph, 4 log base 2 of x plus 3 in here, and you had to have this graphed. I wouldn't even start with a graph. I'd make an XY chart and I'd find a few things. Do you remember graphing logs? Remember picking numbers for this? Remember how three is a good thing? Kind of. Wait, wait, not three. Negative three is kind of a good thing, but it's also not just a normal point. All right, there's my hints. See if you can graph that. When you're done with the XY chart, actually put them on a little graph. Figure out where the asymptote is and I'll pause while you give that a shot. So I know by now some of you have found the asymptote and it was at negative three where you get the asymptote. In case you forgot, this means that x is negative three, so that's a dotted line here at x is negative three. And some of you may have found two points because there's two kind of easy ones. You need three. So find three points, three things you can put in for x and the associated y. You need three points. Why would you need three points? Because only two points, you can only get a straight line through that. You need three to get a curve. And in fact, if it's a complicated curve, you should really have more than three, but we're going to say three is enough. All right, did you try negative four and realize that it doesn't work? You can't have arguments that are negative. If I put a negative four, the whole argument becomes negative, so that's out. So then it must be negative two. That was a big one. All right, I'm going to give you a little bit more time, and then I want you to compare your chart and graph with the kid next to you when you're done. Okay, Mr. Hawks, tell me something you got when you put in negative 2. 
zero because when you put in negative two, you have a one in the argument. If you won the argument, you get nothing. One in the argument spot, the whole thing is zero. Four times zero, still zero. Okay, now I'm gonna put in something else. I'm gonna put in, well, I was kind of moving down, so I'm gonna try moving down even more. How about if I put in negative one? Does that work nice? No. Yes, it does. Because negative one plus the three makes two and log base two of two is easy. It's one. And then you times it by the four in the front there and you get four. And then the last one, I want to see if anybody pulled off. I want x plus 3 to be 1 half. Did anybody do that little trick? I'm impressed. Because that, if I make this 1 half, do you get that that works well with a base of 2? Because 1 half is really 2 to the negative 1. You didn't have to do that. But if you had put in negative 2 and a half, you'll have respect for me that... Cool, this kid knows how to do that. That's, that's hard. And when I actually put in negative two and a half, I get a half here, which is like two to the negative one, so you get negative four. Now, I know not many people picked that one. That's fine. What else could you put in? One. One. Put in a regular one right here, and then you have log base two of four, which is like two squared, so then it's two times four is eight. And look, I've even got four key points. Don't have to have four. Just had to have three out of the four. Okay, negative two comma zero would be right there. Negative one comma four would be there. Negative two and a half comma negative four would be like down there. And one comma eight would be like way up there. And if I connect my dots, There's my basic graph. It is a curve. All right. Cool, that's graphing logs. What else do you have to know? Oh, so many things. What if I just asked you to solve three log base four of uh, 16 equals x minus 2. When you see it, you'll be like, ah, super easy. I was going to like circle the whole thing, but really, really, you start right here. Now why? Because that 16 could be written as? Four squared. And then that means the base is the same, so the answer to this whole thing is two, and then two times three makes six. And then you add two to both sides, eight. And then if I wanted to be sure I was right, I would just go back and put my eight here, and eight minus two is six. And does that all equal six? Well, yeah, it does equal six. All right. And last but not least, combining logs. Do you remember log base three of uh, x minus two plus log base three? Oh, I can combine them. Anytime you have two logs that are like right next to each other, just combine them together. And that equals Now, I know that log base 3 of 3 is 1, but I wouldn't turn that whole thing into 1 at the end because I would want my log base 3 here to be matched with a log base 3 here so that both sides have a log that I can then ignore and focus on the arguments being equal. Another way you could say it is that it's like the logs would cancel on each side. But I gotta combine these first, and it's not technically canceling. But those logs that are the same on both sides can be ignored then.
See, if I rewrote that as a one right now, I wouldn't be able to do this cool thing and go, oh, that just has to equal that. I'm pretty sure it does work. I know sometimes I've had ones where I just can't get it through my head, but I'm pretty sure this factors, doesn't it? Anybody get it to factor? All right. X minus 3, X plus 1. Then I get two answers. X equals 3 and X equals negative 1. A lot of kids made that oops last time. They were like, so X is negative 3. No. X is 3. So X is 1. No, X is negative 1. That's the first mistake people made. And the second mistake was to not go check. On the test, you had to check and make sure, oh, one of these, psych. Can't have a negative right there, can you? That's out. So you leave it just like that, and that is your answer. I can tell you mean that that one works. When you cross that out, you really should label it as extraneous, but if the kid just crossed it out, I was okay with that. You want to be pro, all pro level, write ext next to it. That's clarifying. The answer is extraneous. All right. I think we've reviewed everything that you'd need other than maybe some word problems, but there are some of those on that sheet. So remember how I'm doing the review for this. I'm wanting you to finish both review worksheets, but only half, and you pick which ones. You can jump around. You don't have to just do the evens. If you want to, go ahead, just do the evens. But if you want to, you can jump around and do the ones that scare you. But do half of the worksheet of both worksheets. If I was going to pick a most important test of the month, this is it. It's the most important test of the month by far because it counts as three tests almost. Okay, so don't slack tonight. Get this thing done. And today I want to leave a fair amount of time, which I am, for you guys doing corrections on old tests. Because if you have any old tests that you did bad on, you have to do corrections on it to qualify for the cumulative being a retake. If, if you don't do corrections on it, you can do an A on the cumulative and it won't count. I mean, it'll count as its own test, but it won't retake the other one. So you have to do corrections on old ones if you want the cumulative to count as a retake. And that's all I got for you for today.